Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The Time Machine is a 1960 American post-apocalyptic science fiction film based on the 1895 novella of the same name by H.G. Wells. It was produced and directed by George Powell, and it stars Rod Taylor, Yvette Mimieu, and Alan Young. The storyline goes that on January 5, 1900, a disheveled-looking H.G. Wells, known by George to his friends, arrives late at his own dinner party. He then begins to tell his guest of his travels in his time machine, the work about which his friends knew. They were unbelieving and skeptical about any practical use and whether or not it indeed worked. George himself knew that his machine was stationary in a geographic position, but he did not account for the changes in what happened over time to that location. He also begins to learn that the machine is not impervious, and he's not immune to those who do not understand him or the machine's purpose. He tells his friends that he didn't find a utopian society that he wished had developed, but he mentions specifically a group of people several thousand years in the future, which consist of subterranean Morlocks and surface-dwelling Eloi, who themselves at first glance lead a carefree life. Despite all these issues that he runs into, love can still bloom over the spread of millennia. The movie was originally released in August of 1960, and was distributed by MGM. It received the Academy Award for Best Special Effects for its time-lapse photographic effects, which show the world changing rapidly as the time traveler journeys into the future. George Powell was already known for his pioneering work with stop-motion animation. In 1958, he was approached by a Japanese producer to do an adaptation of H.G. Wells' novel. Initially, he was unable to sell Hollywood on the concept of the film, but he found MGM's British studio seemed much more receptive to his proposal. The name of the film's main character, alluded in dialogue as only George, connects with both George Powell and the story's original science fiction writer, H.G. George Wells. The production was created on a really tight budget and given a filming schedule of just 29 days. Rod Taylor was already the director's first choice to play the time traveler after having lunch together numerous times where they discussed the project. Taylor admitted to being fascinated with the director's rough drawings detailing various scenes. Initially, the director wanted the disc on the machine to spin clockwise for travel into the future and counterclockwise for travel into the past. Due to the way that the mechanism was built, it was deemed too expensive and time-consuming to add this reversing feature, so they just left it alone. Now you see a bunch of props used in the film that were originally used in Forbidden Planet from 1956. The globe in the background when George is listening to the information rings, was used in Forbidden Planet as the navigation sphere. There is also a large circular screen in a square panel on the wall, which was in the cruiser control deck beyond the sphere. The shape of the time machine itself was inspired by the director's favorite types of childhood vehicles, and that was a sled, so that it could slide into time. When the time traveler stops in 1966 in the front window of Philby's department store, there's a brief shot of a display featuring the latest tubeless TV. Look at this closely. It remarkably looks like the modern flat screen computer panel monitors and TVs that we see today. The grand staircase leading up to the Great Dome is a famous MGM landmark among trivia buffs. It was built for a film in 1944 
and miraculously it was saved from destruction by an executive who wisely thought maybe they could use it again. Situated outdoors on Lot 3, not far from the Meet Me in St. Louis street set, it has shown up in numerous films and TV shows. It was seen twice on the Twilight Zone over the years. The original Time Machine was sold at an MGM studio auction in 1971, the same auction that originally sold the ruby slippers from The Wizard of Oz. The winner of the auction was the owner of a traveling show. Five years later, this prop was found in a thrift store in Orange, California. Film historian Bob Burns purchased it for $1,000, and using blueprints his friend George Powell had given him years earlier, he and a crew of friends restored the machine. During the air raid scene, as all of the people rush into the shelter, you can see a little girl crossing the street, and she stops to pick up something that she has dropped. When she does, you can quickly see that it's a small Woody Woodpecker figurine. The reason Woody was chosen for this toy is because his creator, Walter Lance, was good friends with director George Powell. It's been noted that the long shot of George's street in the 1966 air raid scene is a left and right composite shot, but it's even more complicated than that. The right side of the scene with Philby's department store was shot on the Victorian-style David Copperfield court at the end of Lot 2 on MGM's back lot. The left side of the shot is in the middle of Lot 2, and the top half of the shot is a superimposed matte painting of modern architecture reflecting 1966. Now, until her death, January 17, 2022, Yvette Mimieux was the last surviving cast member of the film. She was cast in the role of Weena, despite having no previous acting experience. During her screen test, George Powell observed an innocent persona, and she quickly became his first choice for the role. The studio felt differently. Mimieu lied about her age to the director, stating that she was 18, despite only being 17 when filming began. And this limited her time that was supposed to be spent on the set, because she was still considered a minor. She was terrible at the beginning, and she struggled on the set, but she gradually improved and blew everybody away. As her confidence grew, People became shocked at how good she had gotten over the short time of filming. The director even reshot some of her earlier scenes to take advantage of her improved acting skills. Go back and take a look at this classic 1960 film. It's fun to watch. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.